Hello y'all, we are late in the game setting up Stranded Deep. We are going to take a quick look on how to navigate and understand these menus to get the best experience we can out of this beautiful creation from Beam Team Games. Let's get into it. Here in the main menu, a few honorable mentions are the version tag here in the lower left hand corner, letting us know what version of the game we are currently playing on, 72.01 Experimental. This can be switched off of the Steam website. Simply go to your library, click on the game you would like to change. Over here in the settings option, you'll notice properties. And by going into the beta tab, you can switch the version that you would like to play on. Back to the main menu, we also have our gamer tag here. This gives us our current save game data, showing us how long we have sat in this chair. This in turn brings us to our leaderboard option, where you can track you and your friends chair sitting through your respective gameplays. Everything from most fish fish to most ship scavenged. If you'd like to compare and show off your progress, hit that subscribe button and send me a friend request on Steam, and we will showcase our progress together through this playthrough. Now let's jump into the cartographer to bask in the new big world update. As you can see, no more 5x5 maps, now it is much more generic and realistic. Here on the right we can see a top-down view of our world that we are currently playing in. I normally don't like looking at these after I start to make it more difficult, but what are you gonna do? It's how much y'all mean to me. Besides viewing from God's eye, we can also play God by creating an island. This is a very fun tool we'll be getting to soon in a future video, so make sure to hit the bell icon so you don't miss out on that. We can also hit create a new world which will give us a brand new random generalized procedural map. If you want to add a little pizzazz to your gameplay go to the steam workshop once again. On this main page if we go to the tab under community hub that will take us to the community page of stranded deep. In here if we go to the workshop page go down into the browse tab click on items and all of the maps created by creators around the world will show up. All you have to do now is pick the one you would like to put into your cartographer, hit the green arrow to subscribe to it, and it will show in our community tab in-game. If it doesn't immediately show, reboot the game, and it should show in your community tabs. Once you have the islands you would like to populate your world, it is as simple as delete, drag, and drop. Just go onto the island you would like to replace, delete it, grab the island, and plop it right in. Sorry, I won't be showing you as I am doing a playthrough, I don't want to mess up my world. Here we are in the new game option, let's check out the six options we have available. Switching between the world to random or existing, random will create a brand new random world in that cartographer we were just talking about. Selecting this option will take out all of the selected islands that you have plugged in, as well as the end game island. So right now, existing is pretty much your only option. As far as single player and cooperative mode goes, you can play cooperative on Steam with one of your friends. But as there is only one save game file at the moment, this does tend to be a little iffy. Under the difficulty choices, we do have three options here. We have a creative mode that makes you invincible, allowing you to build, scavenge, and not have to play a survival game. Under normal, it just wants us to stay alive, or hard where the world is brutalizing you, depleting vitals faster, making the animals crave business executive, and not responding resources when you desperately need them. Now the wildlife can be normal, made into passive peace-loving hippies, or removed altogether. And of course, as most games do, we do have a gender option available to us. And finally, the feared permadeath option that will delete your save file upon death. One play, one death, for the intense player only. Now let's go into the game to get a better view of what our options are going to do. In the options menu, we can quickly optimize the game for our PC monitors and gameplay preference. Generally, there are a few things to mess with in the general section. The HUD, crosshair, and item highlighting all have to do with what your character will see in-game. For instance here you can see giant grouper fish, that is our HUD information. The reticle in the center, the white dot, is our crosshair, and the grouper fish is also highlighted with a white line. To take each one of these off respectively, go into the options and turn them off at your own discretion. Going back into the game, we'll notice that all three of those are now gone. No more pesky item highlighting letting you know what's interactable. Also in general are our camera view mode options. This can be switched from third person to a first person viewing, completely taking away our head apparently. As far as the ocean motion sickness effect goes, you do have to change this in the main menu of the game. 
this generally doesn't have too big of an effect. But let's see what 0 to 100% will do. And here is our ocean motion sickness at 0. And here we have ocean motion sickness set to 100%. As you can see, not too big of a difference, but a difference nonetheless. Now let's talk about everyone's favorite and most confusing category in games, graphics. This can be a little difficult to understand sometimes, but let's take a peek at the easy setup first. The presets are well established in video games, and these are no different. Choose between laptop configurations, important for non-gaming specific laptops, or regular PC presets, low, medium, high, and ultra settings. Now before you go setting it to ultra, expecting nothing bad to happen, remember your computer is a machine, yes, but not the Terminator. Unless you count when it terminates its own life after trying to render all the graphics you just bazooka at it. I suggest downloading a hardware monitoring software like HW Monitor and GPU-Z to keep an eye on your system stats while trying strenuous games. Precautions aside, most gaming computers can handle the high and ultra settings, and as you can see it changes most but not all of the settings available. Let's go ahead and run through these really quick and see how they affect our game. As you can see the low settings are not that bad here, meaning even if you don't have the best PC to play this game, it still looks beautiful. Now let's jump right up to Ultra and see the difference here. As you can see, yes there is quite a difference, a lot more clear, but even those low settings are good enough, still making this game quite the gem. Now we're not done there yet, there are still a few other things we can do here to really make it pop out. Using the color profile, setting it to vibrant, really allows all the colors in this game to pop just a little bit more. Fixed frame rate and vertical sync have a lot to do with your own personal monitor, so you'll have to check your own specs for those. For instance, I'm on a 75Hz monitor, so 70 would be the optimal for me, but as I am recording at 60 frames per second, I'm going to keep my fixed frame rate at 60. This in turn does cancel out vertical sync, so you have to choose one or the other depending on your hardware. Now that we have our graphics handled, let's make sure we understand the audio. In here we have a total of six volume controls, one being the master volume, next being the music volume controlling the iconic Stranded Deep soundtracks. Next environmental volume controls sounds like the weather and ocean sounds. While the effects volume deals with animal and movement sounds like walking or a spear hitting a rock. The voice volume is indeed the volume of oh gross and disgusting you'll hear throughout the game. Ugh, gross. Ugh, it's disgusting. And finally UI or user interaction sounds like opening a crate or picking up a spear. And as they are all way too loud I found a sweet spot at 42. I don't know why it just works. Now let's go into the input options here, every gamer's favorite, here you can customize your gameplay experience. If you want your radio menus, like your backpack or your crate to stay open for instance, without holding the key, here is where you would do that, just click that to on, and now just by pressing tab, your radio menus will stay open. You can also find your camera panning attributes here as well, so you can turn on a dime for quick kills or slowly investigate your surrounding. But the good stuff is usually down below, right? Controller mapping gives us the power of a programmer. Well, kinda. Here we can reassign keys to meet our own gameplay preference, very handy if you suck at lighting a fire for instance, me. But you can assign just about any movement or key and really make it your own. Just choose between keyboard and mouse, click the box under that option and hit any key. Now in reverse if you'd like to take this out, go ahead and click it again and hit remove or you can reassign it to a new key. And of course if you start reassigning keys and get lost, you can always hit the default button to bring you back to default recommendations. And finally we have the about section with credits and such, but who reads that? Now all you gotta do is like this video to start the game and subscribe if you want to be awesome at it. Thank you all for watching, we were late in the game, but better late than never. Have a great play.